or two more minutes. All right, welcome everybody to the Ashbury Agriculture Commission special meeting. Um, I would like to ask who's on the phone with the Rhode Island area code. Go ahead, Luther. Um, Art, I, I just wanted to, I don't know if it's important that we note that we don't have a quorum, so we will not be able to have an official meeting and we won't be able to have, uh, we won't be able to pursue the agenda that was posted. Actually, Luther, I got a real education today and uh, we do yeah. have a quorum. Oh, great. We, um, uh, so we'll get to that, okay, Luther, but we do have one. I just need to know who's on the phone with the 401 area code. Claudia Urson. Claudia Urson? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now I have, I know everybody who's here. I know I have everyone's name. Um, so we are going to call this special meeting to order. Where's my agenda? It's right here. So seating of alternates. So uh, Doug Jenny and Luther Brow will be seated uh, for uh, Mike Sabiga and Dan Zychek. Um, so I'll just, I'll update everybody on the uh, quorum. I had a long conversation with the folks at town hall today and I was educated to the fact that a quorum is a majority of the, of the full member seats. So the Ashford Agriculture Commission is a five full member seats with three alternates. So to have a, an official quorum, all we need to have is three seated members. Uh, tonight we have four. So we are good to go. Uh, and I was assured by the town hall that that is in case the fact. So, so alternates have been seating. Approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Um, these were filed on December 16th or 17th, whatever. They are on the town hall website. Um, so I hopefully the members other than I have had a chance to review them. Um, any changes or uh, issues with the minutes? Go ahead, Luther. You're Please. muted, Luther. My apologies, I clicked past it too fast. Um, the only... The only thing I would propose a revision to is under uh, item number three on the minutes property tax language. Um, I think it would be important for the public uh, distribution of this that it be included on there that there was a commission wide discussion on the uh, proposed language and the documents that were circulated so that it can be abundantly clear to the public that uh, the commission had full participation in the development of what was then uh, sent on to town hall. So you suggest the wording under number uh, three to be after full commission discussion, a motion to move fo forward was you want to amend it that way? Luther? Yeah, I mean, the language, I don't know if the language is um, tremendously critical other than um, I think it's important that we document that, um, you know, consideration of the proposed language uh, was discussed by the commission. That's easy enough to do. Um, I'll just say that usually in any standard meeting, um, no motions are brought forward until full discussion has been taken place, but happy to add that in for if anybody other, Sherry, Doug, um, have any input on that? Nope. I think the uh, inclusion that Luther has asked for is, is appropriate. I don't see it 
being an issue. Not a problem. Uh, so I will, so after, after discussion by the commission, this is the wording, I'm, I'm writing the wording down, so don't make sure I got it right. After discussion by the commission, a motion to move forward was made by Mike Sabiga. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. We'll do that by the commission. Then I would move to approve the minutes as amended. I may just make sure I got this right. After discussion by the commission, a motion to move forward was made by Mike Sabiga and seconded by Lisa Brown. Okay, so we have a motion to accept as amended. We have a second? Yep, I'll, I'll second. second Art. This is Doug. <laughs> I think Sherry beat you, Doug. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Minutes have been approved. Okay. Hear from the public. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to speak? I'm here, but I not I don't need to speak. Okay. Anyone else? Bethany, Steve, Claudia. All right. Moving on. You want to speak? Communications. I've had, other than talking with the town hall about the um, the uh, quorum issue, uh, I've had no communications. Um, Luther or Doug or Sherry, have you had any? Um, no. The only communications I've had is I, I attended the scheduled uh, EDC, the Ashford Economic Development uh, Commission meeting. Uh, we'd been invited to attend that meeting to um, provide some further clarity on um, the proposed tax language changes. Uh, I did attend that. They were unable to achieve a quorum. They only had three members, <clears throat> excuse me, that were able to join. Um, we did have some informal discussion uh, about the EDC's interest in um, continuing to um, aid in promotion of agricultural businesses in town. Um, we did have some very, very uh, limited discussion on um, agriculture and what agriculture really is and, and what agriculture really isn't. And we were able to talk about um, EDC had a concern or the, I shouldn't say the EDC because it was an unofficial meeting. Let's be very clear on that. Um, uh, the members that were present expressed concern over this proposed tax abatement language being applied to um, they hope to recruit a large uh, medicinal or recreational cannabis grower to locate in the town. Um, and they were concerned that this language would be applicable to that operation and would thereby negatively impact the available tax revenue for the town. I was able to clarify for them <clears throat> uh, and that cannabis is uh, not classified by the Department of Agriculture as agriculture, is regulated entirely differently and is regulated by bodies outside of that and that no uh, medicinal or recreational cannabis operation uh, would be able to even apply for either of these measures, let alone qualify. So that was good. That, I think that was positive communication. That was a favorable dialogue to be able to clear up that confusion. Yeah, just to be clear, um, by state statute, cannabis is regulated entirely differently. And that's a statute, statutorily uh, 
defined. So, yeah, and they recently amended the definition of agriculture to specifically call out that cannabis is not agriculture. See, so good. Yeah, yeah so that was good. All right. Thank you, Luther. Old business, property taxes, our uh, update, RE, the Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, that was, uh, was interesting. It didn't go all that well. Some information was supplied to the Board of Selectmen at the last meeting um, that probably shouldn't have been even brought up at the meeting um, until it had been made public. Uh, so that was, um, that was unfortunate because everything went off the rails after that. So I don't know, Luther, you were there. You got anything else you wanna add? Uh, no, I mean, I think, I think your portrayal's possibly accurate. Um, you know, the full context of it being that Art and I were asked to speak on behalf of the proposed changes um, but when we were asked to speak about them, neither of us had been made aware that um, there had been two letters of concern submitted. Um, so we began speaking in support of the language, uh, ill prepared to be able to address the concerns of the other, other residents in the town. Um, so that was unfortunate. Um, if we'd been made aware of those communications in advance of the meeting, or if the or honestly, if the meeting had just brought up the item and tabled it and given us an opportunity to review the concerns, uh, then the commission could have fulfilled its, its purpose a little more effectively, I think. Um, Technically, that's probably how it should have gone, Luther. It should have just tabled it and, um, and moved yeah. on. So, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, I think also, I think we as a commission may bear some uh, responsibility in terms of, in, you know, hindsight's always 2020, um, and, or not always, but sometimes. And I think we may be, I think it, in part because we've been working on this for so long <laughs> and we finally had um, language approved. I'm sorry for my clock guys, um, bear with me. Uh, because we finally had language that was at a place that the commission felt like it could move forward, we just immediately moved it forward. And I wonder if we wouldn't have been wise to reflect for a moment on how to also um, release communication to the town and to the various boards and commissions about <clears throat> educating them further as to not only what is the impact of these proposed language changes, but what is, what is agriculture um, currently? What is agriculture in the town currently? Um, I think it's become a, a little bit more clear to me that those of us that are in production agriculture um, take for granted that we understand what production agriculture looks like, feels like, and that a lot of people only know what they see at the grocery store and they don't understand how those products get there. And so there's the potential for some misconceptions. And I think we could have, and maybe should circle back. I mean, it's, it's up to the collective. I'm not, I'm not trying to steer this ship any one direction, but I wonder if we should have a bit more of a communication piece to support. We this. probably should, but because your agenda item strictly limits us to discussing the board of selectmen meeting, and this being a special meeting, we have to stick exactly 100%. to the agenda. 100%. So what I would propose, I'll just throw this out there, or maybe I'll save this for later for remarks for the good. Um, I think I'll do that. So we'll just move on and we'll we'll get there. Okay. Um, our, just to, to close out um, the, the Board of Selectmen meeting, specific uh, discussion points, um, I think it's worth Noting, I don't think it's inappropriate to note that both uh, uh, Mr. Mariko and, and uh, Ms. Erson were on that meeting and they were both concerned about the language uh, just for the context of the rest of us that are on the call. Because that, that was uh, 
the outcome of that board of selectmen meeting. Okay. Uh, um, can you also discuss the uh, membership? Because that was not the only item we brought to the selectmen. Yeah, that's that's number B, Sherry. We're getting we're going right. right to it now. Getting to that. <laughs> you got your agenda, Sherry. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Know you. I gave you one. <laughs> All right, board of selection appointment of members. Okay. So this, this is funny. Actually, I have to laugh at it now. So after our last meeting in December, um, you'll see in the minutes of the last meeting, all of the recommendations that we made. Um, this was emailed to the Board of Selectmen in December. Um, hoping to get on their agenda. We didn't get on their agenda. And so nothing was done. What has to happen with the Board of Selectmen is they make appointments and they make the changes. We elect officers, but they need to make the changes, yeah. move alternates into full positions, replace mm -hmm. members with other members. We just recommend to them what we'd like to see. So, um, so that's what I sent to them and nothing was done. I, I never got on the agenda. Um, it was brought up at the last board of selectmen meeting that they never got it. Um, I made it clear that they did. Um, so mm -hmm. I have since sent a, another additional email requesting the changes we have in the minutes from December and, uh, to both, uh, uh, first selectman Folletti and, uh, Chris Abacoff. Um, I will be following that up with an email again with the minutes from this meeting. Um, so because the agenda says board of select an appointment of, of members, that's how it goes. And uh, so we will hopefully, I will again make the request outlining what we'd like to see um, it, via email to chairman, uh, first select Mifleti and Chris Abakoff in the hopes that we'll get it on the February 7th agenda. Um, so we don't, we've already voted on this. We don't need to vote on it again, I don't think. Um, I'll get some input from the other commission members if they think we should vote on it again or you think we should just keep getting it in front of them. I see I Sherry voted. shook her head no, Luther said no. Doug, what do you think? It sounds like we just have to keep pushing it so they execute their end of what needs to be done, right? Okay. As a yep. non-member, parliamentary procedure-wise, you wouldn't yes. vote on it a second time. What's that? Sorry, my kids in the background. As a parliamentary procedures-wise, you wouldn't vote on it a second time, only once. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I teach ag, and Parley Pro is a big thing. So <laughs> we have another alternate position open. <laughs> Bethany. <laughs> All these all right. spots. <laughs> so, so, all right, so that takes care of uh, 6B. 6C is election of officers. What we'll need to do is we'll need to wait until the Board of Selectmen makes the switcheroos, okay. puts everything in place, and we will vote. Hopefully, they do it the seventh. Then we can vote again at the seventh. Go ahead, Luther. Um, not to steal her thunder, but to Bethany's point, we've actually already held those votes and submitted our recommendations and done this as a commission. And because we had a full quorum of acting members, it should carry over and not need to be replicated. So then if the Board of Selectmen makes their changes. To go. Luther and Doug will be chairman and vice chairman at the February uh, 17th meeting. And Meg will be an alternate. Hi, Meg. Um, okay, everybody good? Sh just shake your head yes. I can see you all. All right. Yeah, that, that makes sense, sir. I was gonna actually ask that question about the officer since we did have a quorum in December and the commission as a whole voted on everything. Well, I'm very grateful so that, that Bethany's here question. because you guys will be in charge in February if uh, the board of selectmen does their job. <laughs> Unless I resign before then. That's not going <laughs> to happen, Luther. It's not happening. 
Not allowed. Where you live, you can't. <laughs> May well happen. <laughs> New business, monthly communications. Um, Luther, what's that? So we had a goal to try to be more um, visible to the community with regards to the monthly articles in the citizen. Oh yeah, now I remember. Yeah, makes perfect um, sense. I think it would be useful to keep this as a durable agenda item that yes. we, need to, we need to find a way to either schedule the entire year's uh, communications in terms of allocating them to members and then that member has um, some free, free reign within the scope of agricultural topics to uh, fill that month's communication. And I think we need to get um, some deadlines impl implemented. My own, this again, my recommendations uh, would be to have some deadlines that we firm up with the town hall to make submission easier on the town hall. I know we've rushed them a couple times with our communications. I've been told that if we get um, communications to them in advance. They can do some nice um, formatting. They can include images. Uh, there's there's options for us to to have a really nice look and feel to this. And if if we can find out what those deadlines are and stick to them, then I think we have a really great free resource to try to educate the community around us as as to why agriculture is so important to the town. I agree. I think so. I think the um... The deadline for the citizen is like the 20th of the month. And sometimes our meetings fall before and sometimes they fall after. And so we, we miss it. We try to plan it at a meeting. And I think it's a very good, we need to be at least a month ahead, right? So that at the February meeting, we're planning the April article, which will go in in March, right? That's how, that's just how publishing is done. I guess everything's got a massive lead time. So, uh, so I, I really, I think Luther's on to something there. I think that's great. Um, so I don't, so I think uh, we need to maybe hammer some stuff out at the February meeting, right? Assign some dates and and uh, get some people signed up to write an article or something. And um, one thing maybe we can clarify with the town hall in terms of, um, you know, we have to be careful about uh, distribution and email communication within the commission. So it's not construed as a improperly held meeting, but is there a way that as a commission, we can circulate an article ahead of a meeting for approval? Can, can a, you know, I don't know the answer to this, but can, you know, if, if a person had an article, let's say Doug is writing an article about um, the, you know, the way that they are uh, starting seeds for transfer to whatever. I, I don't know. I'm making stuff up. But if he writes that article and gets it out to the commission, can the commission review that and give a thumbs up? Or does that have to be done in a meeting? I don't know. My, my instinct is it has to be a meeting, but I don't know. I saw Bethany shaking her head yes. So as so, long as it's, it's, I believe that as long, and, and I believe, so I'm not hundred percent, but I believe that as long as it's on the agenda item, you can pass out materials ahead of time, right? And so then your final discussion would land on the agenda, right? So if everyone got the materials ahead of time, so we could review them, and then you, you would come back to your agenda at the next meeting, and that's when you would have the full out discourse about the topic. Gotcha. So it looks like we still have to be, we got to have have a month lead time. Yeah, and we can't just give approval of that uh, document outside of a meeting. The actual approval has to happen at a meeting. My dogs are absolutely going mental. I'm sorry. So, so yeah, yeah that I see Bethany shaking her head. Yes, you're hired. You are hired as. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so we will. We will assign, actually, if someone comes up with an idea and wants to whip up a paragraph or two and get it out to the commission prior to the February meeting, we, I believe the meeting is the 17th. I'm not, I don't have a calendar in front of me, third Thursday, whatever that is. We could put our stamp of approval on it 
at the February meeting and it would be able to go into the March citizen, the March one citizen. All right, let me look at my calendar. We could do that, but it would be, maybe the goal could be to have both February and March articles. So two volunteers so that we have both February and March because uh, we have to get out ahead of this or else we're gonna be constantly running up against the submission deadlines and town hall is gonna run out of tolerance. Yeah, and I just, I think the 20th is on a Sunday. So, um, and we're on Thursday. So there's really only one business day that town hall is open before their deadline. They would probably accept stuff last minute Monday, but again, you're not gonna get the benefit what Luther was talking about before of, of additional graphics and better setup other than just a type thing stamped in the in the citizen so uh, i think it's worth trying i think i don't see any harm in trying to if someone can pull together some outreach even if it's just basic educational outreach i have um a topic i'd be happy to pursue for for march i don't know that i'd have the bandwidth to pull it off for february i have a topic talking about um um uh, labeling tactics. I don't know how many of you have seen how uh, brands have become very, very underhanded in how they're labeling products as non-GMO when a GMO version doesn't even exist. They're labeling them as gluten-free when they never in a million years would have had gluten in them. They're, they're using all these sort of underhanded labeling practices to try to skew people towards their products. But an informed consumer should understand that there's only about eight GMO products available in the whole of the US and that, you know, GMO tomatoes are not a thing. So I was gonna pull together something for that. I've had that rattling around in my head for a couple of months and I just haven't been able to put it together. So I, I will volunteer to do that for the March, um, but it's also probably a little bit too long and I'd like to include some images to be able to pull that together for February. Yeah, so it almost looks like if even if you had it together for February, it'll be March, together. So the March meeting is going to be March 17th and it's going to be the same because it's February 28 days. It's going to fall on the same. Let me clarify. The, I'm going to have it ready for the commission to consider for our February meeting. Okay. So that we can then submit it for the March publication to be able to take advantage of all the ability to include artwork and formatting and the like. So February 20th is the deadline for the March 1st citizen. And, and March 20th is the deadline for the April 1st citizen. Thank you. So I will be submitting for the April publication. Okay. All right. So we're now we're a month ahead. So now now in March, we need somebody to come up for the March meeting. We need somebody to have a May article ready for the May meeting. Yep. And we're, we're probably going to want to have someone available for Yeah, for the March. Yeah, he's still if saying if we need somebody for the March for March publication, just a, a brief, simple yeah. outreach piece. I think. Okay. So something we could send in quick on Friday morning and they'll get it in for the March meeting. Got it. Okay. Luther's going to do that. Somebody else is going to do the next one. All right. So. Art. Yes. You got that back. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do the bigger piece that will go out for April and we need someone to do a short piece that will go out. Oh, you want a shorty quick. All right. <laughs> doing that. Somebody will have something for the February <laughs> meeting, right? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do something if I can come up with a topic. We can chat about it. So, hey. Meg, I'm sure you can throw together a paragraph about horses in a heartbeat. <laughs> that I can, but All right. yeah, I'll ponder something. Let me see if I can All right. for you guys. So action, I, we just discussed a bunch of action items for the next regular meeting. Um, we will be, uh, so it'll be February 17th. Hopefully Doug will be vice chair and Luther will be chair. 
Um, Luther will have his article. Meg will have her little article. Um, oh no, Luther won't have an article. Yeah, or I'm Willie, not. I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> He'll tell me. Do we have um, any other action items, Art, that need to be assigned regarding um, following up with either Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen, um, um, EDC, any of those other committees and commissions? Do, do we need to do any additional action items for um, follow up on either providing further details or outreach or anything like that? It's too bad Paul's not here to let us know what's going on with Board of Finance. Um, and, uh, Paul had let me know that they are not likely to look at anything for a period of time because they're so tied up with the budget process. Okay. So, um, so that's got, kind of on hold. The uh, board so, of finance, he also told me that the board of finance doesn't have any real, um, authority or oversight on ordinance changes you know, they, they would have some insight as to how there may or may not be potential impact uh, to I the think budget, but he, he's That's like, what the board of not, selectmen were working for, looking for from the board of finance. I mean, they wouldn't yeah. have any regulatory say, but they would certainly have some input on the dollars. Yeah. So, uh, and I think that's what everybody wants to see. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so, so we'd wait to hear from Paul and see how that's going as far as what was the EDC. Um, are they going to send an email uh, with an inf in invitation, a formal invitation for us to present to them? Or um... So uh, the way that it was talked about that uh, I let them know that they were welcome to invite us to attend their next meeting. Um, they're really struggling. Uh, a very large portion of their membership will not engage virtually. Um, so they're really struggling to hold a meeting they haven't held meetings in a very very long time and no official meetings so that i think we're gonna is gonna be back burner so maybe there's okay. not an action item there i just wanted to make sure we didn't uh, jump past that without really considering it yeah so the really so action items are just to uh i mean i really think we got to try to make sure that um we get all the newly elected and current members there um, make sure that so uh, and then we'll go. F that's that's all I can think of. There really isn't much coming on. Um, so uh, other than the articles, I mean that's and just be prepared to uh, attend another either board of selectmen or board of finance or EDC commission meeting at moment's notice. Um, so remarks for the good. So I wanted to, so Luther was talking of, earlier, we were talking about doing a better job of educating and, and you know, that's, that, that's our whole mission. I mean, that's what the ordinance says that established us. And so uh, I, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe at the, and this could become an action item for the next meeting. Maybe we need to sit back and uh, you spoke, Luther mentioned the tax proposals. Um, I think maybe, yeah, he's right. If we did a better job getting it out, what these are, how they're statutorily, we're following state statute, um, and it's how they're set up and who benefits, which is everyone in town. Um, so, uh, so I think, I think maybe an action item for the next meeting would be sit down and think about how we're going to start, uh, get back to our education mission statement which established us because uh, we kind of as we have seen we've kind of um, maybe dropped the ball there a little bit so uh, so I don't know what anybody else thinks but um, that's just eh, that sticks out to me I mean that we did a real good job with all the other ordinances that we passed and we were way out in front of everything with with getting stuff out information to everybody and and uh and I it's think just, you're right. I think you're so, right, Art. So I think, um, so why don't we plan on for, here's an action item for the next meeting. Let's plan on an agenda item, which will be an information session discussing the, uh, the two tax abatement proposals and what they entail and what's involved. 
Uh, who gets the tax break? Who doesn't? You made it crystal clear tonight. It's not marijuana. Um, so, uh, so, and that was brought up at the board of selectmen meeting. It was. I mean, it was one of the questions right out of the selectmen. Yep. Um, so it's. Uh, so I think we need to. I think we should have that as an agenda item for the next meeting. Um, maybe just one item explaining, and hopefully uh, people will see when we post the agenda that that's on there. And if they're interested in finding out what the nuts and bolts are of these two uh, proposals, uh, they'll come join us at the meeting and ask questions and engage. So, so to be clear, you're proposing we do a, a deep dive presentation as part of our next meeting that we can share, but, well, but we could share a screen, go through the language, clarify what it means. You know, I mean, if we're Have going to offer, yeah, and if we're going to offer an informational session, we should probably be thorough with it. So maybe that it's going to take some time. I, I can see that going an hour or longer, just that one item. So, uh, so maybe depending it's the, on the level, agenda item. Depending right? on the level of engagement. Well, I think we can fit it with our other stuff. Hey, we go through it pretty quick, but yeah, so we could, um, I think that's a good idea. So uh, depending on how the board of selectmen goes. Uh, yeah, they um, may say, look, so we want to table this till uh, October. We want to table this until next year. We, we, we don't have any interest in entertaining this. They could just say, no, we're not going to look at this right now. We have too much on our plate. Who, the Which board of selectmen? Say, yeah, yeah, and that's entirely within their purview. Right, so, so we'll see how the meeting goes. Uh, the next meeting, if we're even on the agenda. Um, I would think we were because they put us on the agenda um, once they start. Uh, so um, so hopefully the tax proposals are on the Board of Selectmen agenda and our changes to the um, makeup of the commission are on the agenda. Um, that's all I have for remarks for the good. Anybody else have anything they want to say? Just, just very briefly from, from uh, our farm, um, on the communication front, I think it's um, I think it's also important that we we find a way to make it clear to the public that um, the things we're doing are in pursuit <clears throat> of benefit to the public and not just our own personal um, means of benefiting ourselves. Um, you know, at the board of selectmen meeting, it was it was effectively suggested that all this tax language uh, proposal was basically being um, pushed as my own personal uh, mission to the benefit of our family and that, uh, that there's uh, inappropriate, unethical behavior uh, on my part being undertaken, um, which uh, is unfortunate that I'm being portrayed that way now. Um, that's certainly never been my intention. Um, so I think it's very important that uh, we find a way or that the commission finds a way to protect its membership from being attacked in such ways. Because the reality is that the members of this commission are people that are actively engaged in the pursuit of agriculture. And so it's always going to be of personal interest to people of this commission, the outcome of various proposals that the commission makes. And we have to find a way of making that understood by the general public, uh, that it's the task of this commission to do the work we're doing. And it's not any one member of the commission trying to um, do better for themselves at the cost of someone else. Well, I think Luther, I, I, I agree. And I think, um, I think that is directly tied to our, our dropping of the ball of education. I mean, you can point directly at the cost of community services and how farms, forests and open space uh, benefit everyone. How farms, forests and open space pay more in taxes than they do use in town services and that it is in every member of this town, resident of this town to support agriculture because it saves them money. Um, it keeps our tax rates lower. Um, and if the town were to build out fully residential, um, I can't imagine what the tax rates would be. So financially the town 
every member of this town needs the farms, the forests and the open space. And we dropped the ball educating people on what these tax proposals meant and what they would do for the town and for the community. Um, so having, that's pretty much all I have to say. So, um, so. so. So Art, along those lines, I've been thinking, I, while you're talking, I pulled out the POCD. And I think what we probably want to strive for is, as a commission, is like probably in the format of like one slide that could be shown at meetings, like a PowerPoint slide, capturing all the key items that the Ag Commission is established to, to withhold and tying things back to the POCD and then probably make that as a format in maybe like a one page flyer for other types of um forums as necessary and that this could all be put on the town website under the ag commission in the end and that would be the go-to documentation that we would grab as a commission when we have to go talk to other commissions other towns et cetera, et cetera. and then we don't have to keep um coming back and making this up making something like this again almost like a we'll cover have to yeah, and we'll have to update it accordingly as as times change and we we evolve, if you will. And there's probably aspects in there that we could tie back to Connecticut State Statute as well as the Connecticut Farm Bureau Association, right? Well, certainly state statute and the definition of what agriculture is, right? State clearly defines agriculture. Sure. You know, and we everything we do, everything the town does. Everything planning and zoning does, everything the tax assessor does is strictly tied to that statute. And um, it's not just us making crap up, so. Yeah, we should definitely have that on our website, our webpage too. That should be part of the, you know, part of our landing page on the town website is, you know, <laughs> the state definition of agriculture. Yes. Um, so, Doug, you got time to play with a PowerPoint slide? <laughs> If you give me the uh, the key inputs, I can start laying something out. Probably when I am not sleeping in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, well, so so the state statute, but, yeah. state definition, statutory definition of agriculture um, would be a place to start. Uh, and our mission, our the ordinance that establishes the agriculture commission, is on the town website. Um, so, and I know I've handed that out printed in many, many meetings, usually my January 1st, first January meeting of the year, I went through that ordinance with everybody and we haven't had a real meeting in two years. I just went through the minutes that were filed at the town and it was 2020, January or February of 2020, the last time we had a real uh, a, a official meeting. So, uh, so anyway, so, um, so that's, um, that's that. So, uh, so the state statute yep. definition and the ordinance start pulling bits and pieces of that, and uh, and we'll go from there. All right. Anything else? Our next regular meeting will be February seventeenth of twenty twenty two. It will be at 7.30 p.m. It will most likely be a Zoom again. Um, and I will, when I file the minutes, I will ask Cheryl Baker to schedule our Zoom call then so that we, weren't, we won't be going through the last minute um, gyrations we went through this week. So, uh, so we'll, be, we'll have that Zoom call all set up. So now, now we know what a quorum is uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get rolling again. All right, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I'll second, Luther. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you for coming, everybody. <laughs>